whiteboard here too. Okay, good. All right, so you are here for uh, how to gain additional or how to get more email subscribers. So I wanted to start with just a quick question of number one, do you have an email list? So I know kind of how to tailor this. Usually what I do is I like to start from all the way from the beginning. Um, I do tend to have a, big, a lot of beginners in my audience and that's uh, that's really actually where I like to help. I like to help people who are just getting started because I feel like not only are you um, sometimes the most motivated, but uh, you've got a lot of growth potential. And so I really like helping you get started. So if you don't already have an email list, that's absolutely fine. If you do, but you feel like it's small, that's absolutely fine. Or if you already have an email list going, but you're trying to figure out how can I just get more email subscribers, then that's fine as well because I'm going to cover it all. What I do for my beginners is um, I'll typically take like the first, you know, 10 minutes or so to kind of cover that part of it. And then we'll kind of move into the intermediate. And by the end of it, I'll be talking about the more advanced strategies. So it will cover something for everyone. If you feel like you're already, you know, well beyond the beginner stuff, I would invite you to not skip the first part of this training simply because you don't know what you don't know. And so something that you think you might already know because you're like, well, I've already been in this game for a while. Like you might not know that. So just go ahead and, and be patient with it. Give it a second and allow that learning to kind of reintegrate for you. Okay. All right. A uh, question is uh, with all the noise and scams out there, do you suggest being really sure about who we are before entering the entrepreneurial space? Um, Actually, my answer to that is no. Uh, some people will say like, yes, you need to know like who you are and like who you want to go after. But I feel like um, for me, entrepreneurship has been a personal development journey, period. So it's actually helped me to figure out more of who I am by essentially sometimes doing the things that I, I don't want to do and you don't realize what you don't want to do until you do it. And you're like, I don't want to do that anymore. Uh, for example, I always thought I wanted to have like an agency. I always thought I wanted to have a lot of employees. I always thought like I, those are the things that I thought I wanted. And then I started running an agency and I said, this is not for me. And so I think that becoming an entrepreneur, it, the, the word, the key word there is becoming, like you're always becoming. And so I don't think you necessarily need to wait like until you've got like this blessing before you become an entrepreneur. Like the process of becoming an entrepreneur is what teaches you how to be a really good entrepreneur, okay? Um, all right, don't have a list, don't have a list, just entering the coaching space and want to know how to grow a list. Okay, perfect. So if you're just starting out and you don't have an email list at all, the first thing that you want to have obviously is the tech piece of it, which is uh, an email service provider. Um, I have used MailChimp in the past. Um, ConvertKit is one that I highly recommend. Um, I've used AWeber before, but I would recommend if you're just getting started, check out MailChimp or ConvertKit. ConvertKit is the one that I recommend. Um, but if you need something that's like, is just absolutely free, check out the convert kit. Um, the convert kit has a program where uh, it's free for the first uh, couple hundred subscribers or thousand subscribers or something like that. So you definitely want to check that out. Okay. Um, once you have that, your next goal is to start getting people onto that list. The way that you can get people onto that list is to start contacting anyone that you know, who might be interested in hearing from you say, Hey, I've got this new, um, you know, business that I'm setting up or I'm starting to coach people, or I've been already doing this and, um, I'm going to be writing some, some, uh, tips and suggestions and, and, you know, short stories and things like that. Uh, would you be interested in, in joining the email list? Okay. And so you can probably get your first, you know, five, 10, 15, 20, even a hundred subscribers that way, just by doing those personal outreach and connections. Okay. So that's essentially like the beginner, beginner foundation. It's the first thing to start off. Um, and let me see if I can pull up, um, the special that convert kit actually does have for beginners. If I can type the name in right and as we go on if you guys have any questions for those of you who are here live feel free to um, ask those okay 
So on the pricing page, you'll see that it says $29 a month for zero to a thousand subscribers. But I know for a fact that there is a special offer. Uh, let's see. And while you guys are asking your questions, if you have any so far, I will go ahead and pull that up. All right, let's see. Um, I think it's this 30 day. Let me see what this one's looking. I think this is it. I think it's called the Creator Pass. Let me pull it up. If I if this is it, I'll put this in the. Uh... Okay, this I think this is it. So you have two options with ConvertKit for the beginner thing. They've got the Creator Pass, which is actually a series of courses. So I'll put that in here. It's $1.99. That's an affiliate link, by the way. Um, or you can just get started right away for $29 a month, but there's a free trial with that, which is this one. Slash free 30 convert kit. All right, that's where I would recommend that you start. Now, if you're concerned about, you know, is it too expensive? I'm going to share with you some tactics inside of this training to where like that pricing is, is not going to even matter. It's going to be the last thing you worry about. The last thing I worry about is my um, email service provider or the, any of the tools that I use for my business, because every single tool that I use in my business, I specifically have a ROI set in place for that, like a return on investment. And I know what I'm using it for and the return that I expect it to bring. But email specifically, I know that I can send out an email and immediately make sales. And I'm gonna share with you guys during these next couple of trainings exactly how to do that, okay? All right, let's get back into it. All right, so you've got your, your first couple of email subscribers. And the thing is, is that a lot of people will talk about email subscribers and um, people just want email addresses, but really what you want are potential clients. So on your email list, you when you're first getting started and you start contacting people like, yeah, that's fine to kind of reach out to people who you think might be interested. But once you start really filling your email list, you want people who specifically want what you have to offer. The same way that when I asked in the chat, what is it that you guys are looking to get out of this session? The answers were related to I'm entering the coaching space. That's because I specifically speak to coaches. So that means that everyone that is in my circle on my list should be someone who is a coach or interested in getting into coaching or has just started their coaching business because that's who I speak to. So if there's somebody on my list who, for example, sells physical products, that's not a valuable email address. Okay. It's not, it's not valuable to me because I don't have any services or products to offer them. I can't help them take the next step further. Okay. So that's something to keep in mind as well, okay? So if you don't have an email list, that's where you would start, okay? So the next thing that you're doing is you're figuring out, okay, who is the person that I want on my email list, okay? So we're still kind of talking about this, the beginner stage. Who do I actually want on my email list? The person that you want on your email list is someone who could potentially become a client, someone who could potentially become a buyer. Everybody on your email list is not going to be a buyer. There are going to be the same way that when you go to a concert, right? Even the there's usually a headlining act and then there's a, um, there's a, uh, their opening acts, right? So you might have been there and bought the concert ticket because you really wanted to see the headlining act and maybe you you don't really know who the headlining acts are, or maybe you know like one or two people, right? But you're really there for 
for that main act, right? The same, the same thing is true of like email subscribers. Some email subscribers are there for like the main act where they actually want to be a buyer. And some of them are, and they're there for the headlining acts. Like they want everything where they're a buyer. And some of them are just kind of there for the, the, you know, the headlining acts, but they're really just there for the the main act. I hope that's a good analogy, but basically like everybody's not there for everything. Okay. Um, some people are there because they do want to be there for those, um, They want to buy everything that you have. Like they want to, they really want help with that problem. And some people are just kind of feeling things out. Okay. So it's okay if you have people on your list who are, um, who are not quite buyers yet. All right. Your goal is to speak to the buyers on your list. And we're going to be talking about this a lot more when we get into, um, how to only, um, how to talk to buyers. We're going to get to that a little bit more, but I want you to kind of keep that in mind right now, which is your goal is to every time you send an email, every time you create a piece of content is to speak to the people who are your buyers. And you don't know who those people are yet, but you're not trying to convince people to invest. Okay. You're not trying to convince anyone to buy. You're not trying to convince anyone. If you write your emails and create your content as if you're trying to convince people, then you're not actually speaking to your buyers who don't need to be convinced. You're speaking to non-buyers. Okay. So you're thinking about who's going to be on your list. Who are these people who you eventually want to work with? And you've got to create an ideal client avatar. Okay. I'm going to put this in the chat. Ideal client avatar. An ideal client avatar or an ICA is someone who is, uh, is basically the person that, that you want to work with. It starts out, I always start by naming my ideal client avatar because it's supposed to be a specific person. Okay. Even though you're making this person up, you're creating this person from scratch. You should be able to like, look at what you're, um, what you're writing and like, think like, okay, this is a specific, this is a specific person. Okay. The next thing that I do is I typically, uh, write out what their like demographics. So their age range. If they're single, married, do they have children? Are they employed? In general, where do they live? Um, And then from there, I start getting a little bit more granular with the specific characteristics of that type of buyer. Like, are they a member of any types of organizations? Um, You know, do they have, um, you know, not just a member, like, uh, do they have memberships, right? Do they have a, you know, specific, um, like, are they a whole foods shopper? Like, what are those things that you can kind of characterize of your ideal client? What types of music do they listen to? What types of TV shows do they watch? Like who else are they following and who else do they, like, if you were to name a name in general, they'll know who you're talking about because you guys are following the same people or influenced by the same people. Okay. So your ideal client avatar should be pretty specific. And I feel like the one thing that a lot of people miss when they're creating ideal client avatar is they miss putting in that actual problem that the ideal client has. So your ideal client has to have the specific problem that you are uniquely qualified to solve. For example, my ideal clients have the specific problem that they're trying to get coaching clients. That is the problem that I am uniquely qualified to solve. And the way that I'm uniquely qualified to solve that is by helping them create a webinar, create, get really, um, and it really comes down to getting clear on your message. When you go through the process of like creating a webinar, creating a sales presentation, you're getting clear on your message, who you are, and you're easily able to deliver that message. Okay. So when you're really clear on the problem that your ideal client has and how you can solve it, it makes this so much easier to, to figure out where that person might hang out. Okay. So that's the next step. Okay. Um, Oh, this is a good question. So is video better than words or does it depend? Um, I have a preference obviously because I'm doing video right now. I've got a YouTube channel. I love doing video. I prefer video for a couple reasons with video. You can take the video, You can have it transcribed and turn it into a blog post. You can pull the audio out as long as you're not doing any sort of screen sharing. You can pull the audio out and turn it into a podcast. And so you from 
from just recording one time, now you've got video, audio, and blog posts. If you do something written, that's great, but in order to change, like now in order to get a podcast or a video out of that, well, you've got to, you know, there's some platforms where you can take your written words and they'll turn them into like a slideshow. So you could do something like that. But then if you want audio also, somebody's got to read it, right? So I actually prefer video. Some people will, um, some people are not as good creating video just from like bullet points. I feel like if you really know your topic, um, you should learn how to become a really good speaker about your topic, especially for speaking engagements and things like that. If you're nervous on video, then obviously I think audio is the next best option. And that's because you can just, you know, use you, your microphone, you don't have to have a camera on. You can have your notes in front of you. You can read from them if you need to. And then from that audio, you can break that down into a blog post. And now you worked one time and you've got two. But for if you just write, well, you've worked one time and you've only got one thing. So that's why I personally prefer video. Um, so I will leave I will leave that at that. Okay. All right. So step one, we have get an email service provider. Okay. These are kind of the beginner steps. Step two is get your first few subscribers. Okay. Step three is, and this is kind of, we're getting into intermediate now. Okay. Figure out your ideal client avatar. Okay. Once you have your ideal client avatar, now you can actually move into creating content because when you know your ideal client avatar and you know the problems that that person has, and you know how you're qualified to solve those problems, well, you can start writing and creating content about that. So I get people who ask, well, what do I write? What do I send to my email subscribers? What do I share with them? And the answer to that is start solving problems, start talking about the problems that they have. Um, so I'd love to get a suggestion from one of you guys. What, um, Give me a suggestion of your ideal client or the coaching that you're providing. And, um, and then I, it'll make it easier for me to provide some examples. Cause I feel like sometimes I always go back to the same examples. I'll use myself as an example, but if you've been following me, you kind of already know what I write, what I create. And so I'd love to maybe give you some examples of what you can write, um, for your ideal client. And if you are happening to be watching, um, if you're watching this as a replay, all you have to do is come into the event that I created inside of the Get Coaching Clients community, and then you can just ask questions in there. Um, I'll probably upload this into the um, event group as well, okay? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and throw, if while you're uh, typing, I'm gonna go ahead and throw one in there. because I think we definitely, um, we definitely have someone who's doing life coaching. So let's say for example, you are doing life coaching and the specific problem that you're helping people solve is that you're helping them get clear on why they're feeling stuck in their life so that they can move forward in, um, and, and live their life dreams. Okay. So you're like doing some sort of lifestyle design or something like that. Okay. So one of the, uh, potential emails or content that you could create could be something about, um, three ways to get unstuck. Okay. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> People who are feeling stuck, you read my mind. Okay. Perfect. Um, relationship, job, weight, spiritual growth. Okay. Perfect. So something you could create, something you can write is three ways to get unstuck. Um, and you can break that up. You can have that in one email or you can break that up over three emails. And now you've got content for an entire week. Um, people also ask how often should I send uh, emails to my list? I think that once you get really good at figuring out what you need to write, uh, you'll realize that there are not enough days in the week to send the number of emails that you want to send. I always recommend that you at a minimum start with one per week 
And if you can't get, um, if one per week feels like a lot, commit to one per week. Like there's not, I don't, there's no way around that. You've got to do at least one per week. And then from there, my next recommendation is to do about three per week. And these are going to be very content rich and helpful emails. So people are excited to read them with something like three ways that um, or three ways to get unstuck or three reasons you're feeling stuck. Uh, that is, that could be three. That could be one email or it could be three emails. Uh, it could be five emails because you could do an intro say over the next couple emails, I'm going to be sharing three ways to get unstuck. Email number one is, is uh, email number two is the first way, then the second way, then the third way. And then the final email, which is email number five is like a sum up of what you've shared. And then you can say, Hey, if you'd like more help getting unstuck, contact me and let's set up a call. Okay. What I, uh, what I did when I was trying to figure out what content to create, this is before I started using the strategy of just talking about my day and then relating it to business somehow, um, or not. Sometimes I wrote out a list of, um, of different uh, content options. And what I did was I thought back to, okay, when I was in this position before I am where I am now, when I was, when I had that same problem that they had, what were my questions? What were my fears? What were my doubts? What were my frustrations? Um, what was the one burning question that I had? Um, and usually that burning question is going to be the thing that keeps them up late at night. That burning question is like, that's typically your offer. The answer to that burning question is typically your offer um, because that's the thing that's gonna, like, that's the thing they're most um, frustrated and they need the most help with. But that doesn't mean that you can't share the answer to that. I know that for my clients who really need coaching clients, their burning question is how do I get coaching clients? And my answer to that is you need to write a webinar you need to be really clear on your messaging and you need to get enough people on that webinar so that you can start booking calls and book your clients. So I already know that that's the answer. I don't have to hold that back. I don't have to say you've got to pay in order to find out that that's the answer because what your offer is going to be and what you're creating is actually how they do it, right? How they take those steps and you're guiding them through it versus just saying, this is what you do. Okay. So when you, figure out who your ideal client is and you're creating content specifically for that person. There's a couple of things you need to have in your, um, in your emails to make sure that they're effective and that they're helping people. Um, number one is you always want to have some sort of story. So make it interesting. Like I said, with my emails, um, I will typically talk about, um, something that happened in my day. Like for example, yesterday I decided to make chocolate pudding and I, I made it, it actually tasted really good, but when I was eating it, I realized that I never really liked the consistency of pudding. It's the same re reason that I don't really like the consistency of yogurt or like any of those things. Even when I was a kid, like I had a really hard time eating like Jello, like any of that stuff. And for some reason I must've forgotten that, but I ate the whole thing because it was part of what I was supposed to eat for the day. So I ate it. Um, but I could tell a story about that. And then I can talk about how, um, isn't it interesting that sometimes you forget about the things that you like and don't like? So that could be one moral of the story. Another thing I could talk about is, isn't it interesting how, you know, sometimes you bite off more than you can chew, but then you just got to chew it, right? Because you, you're committed to, you know, whatever it is you're committed to. Or it, like I could take the moral of that story and tie it into uh, tie it into business and into almost anything. Okay. So that's the first thing you need to have is have some sort of story in your email. The second thing that you need to have in your email, every single email is a call to action. So some sort of story tying it into what you do and then a call to action. Your call to action could be as simple as reply back. If you agree, or if you've got something to say, um, click here, those are my main two or reply back or click here and then sending them somewhere or ask them to reply back. Um, every single email that I write, I don't always have a click to go here, but in the footer, I always do. It'll always say, Hey, I'm Letitia. This is what I do. This is who I help click here if you need help. So every single email that I send, it always has a call to action. 
Um, your call to action is just you asking people to do something. So you've got to have that in every single email. As long as your emails have those two things, you'll have really good emails. Okay. And then the next thing that I'm going to move into now is, well, how do you actually get more email subscribers? Okay. Um, is there, are there automated methods that pull people through your webinar into scheduling to the point you move from strategizing to actually helping people? Yes, absolutely. Um, you can create an entire, and that's actually what I teach inside of you've got clients. You can create the entire process where you re record a really good webinar, really good sales presentation, telling people about who you are, what you offer, how you can help, right? They watch that. They're really excited to work with you. They book their call. You get on the call with them, make sure that they're a good fit for your program. And then you enroll them right away. If you want to pull yourself even out of that part of the process, you've got to get really good at enrolling people first. So I would say if you can enroll, you know, maybe 10 to 50 people, and that's kind of a wide range, but you really want to get good at knowing like what, like what are the major humps to get people over before they actually register or sign up with you as a client. And then you can hire that out to a sales team. And then by that point, the only thing you're doing is when new clients come in, you're just working with them. So you can absolutely do that. Um, one of my clients, Amanda, that's how she set up her business. Uh, we work together inside of you got clients. She's got her webinar all set up and going. Um, she has an entire process for like prospecting, bringing clients in. They watch the webinar. Some of them do, or some of them don't. And then she's got a sales team that's also helping her to kind of book the calls. And basically all she does is she hops on Instagram every now and then and says, Hey guys, this is what we're doing. Go book a call. Her team books the call. And then, um, you know, she's able to work with the client. So absolutely you can automate, um, any and all parts of your business. Okay. All right. So now we're in the final piece and we'll start wrapping this up, which is how do you actually get more email subscribers? And I talk about, um, so if you want to, before I get into that, if you want to dive deeper into what to actually say to people, uh, on your email list, what to send, like how to convert and all of that. Um, the course that I offer is called grow your list, grow your income. And I'm going to pull it up right here. You actually, can get a 20% off discount <laughs> if you go to uh, LetitiaStyles.com and click courses at the top. Let me pull this up so I can show you what it looks like. Um, it's not on the homepage. Why is it not on the homepage? I'll pull it up. So you would just go to LetitiaStyles.com, work with me, and then click courses. And then there's a promo code here that you can use, and I think I've got it down here. There it is, grow your list, grow your income, okay? So in this course, it's a workshop. I talk a lot more about um, Number one, I do all the tech walkthroughs on how to set up your uh, email service provider. Um, I talk about what to say, like I get a lot deeper into that because it's specifically just on how to get your email list going. Okay, so if you want a lot more into that, definitely go and grab that. Once again, before you click enroll now, come up here, grab this code so you can get that 20% um, off, okay? All right. So the final piece that I wanted to talk more about is actually how do you get more people on your email list? And really what this comes down to is getting good at traffic. What is, what is actually getting traffic? Um, let me make sure I've got, yeah. Okay, good. This is going to be a perfect transition because our next session is going to be all about how to make sales with free leads. Okay. So, Getting traffic, there's a, two ways that you can get traffic. You can get organic traffic or you can have paid traffic, okay? Organic traffic is traffic that you don't really control. They happen to wander in the front door of your store because they were, they were you know, walking on the sidewalk and they happen to be in the store next door and they saw your store and they're like, oh, I guess I'll be here too. 
Um, it's traffic that comes from Google where people are typing in a search term. It's traffic that comes from Pinterest where people are typing in a search term. It's traffic that comes from YouTube because they happen to get suggested your video. Uh, it's traffic that, you know, somebody tagged them on an Instagram post. Like you don't control this traffic that happens. I like to call this traffic icing on a delicious cake because if someone were to come to you and they wanted to buy your business and you were only focused on organic traffic and they said, how many people come into your store every day? And you answered, it depends then they're not going to buy your business. Okay. Because you don't have control over the traffic that's coming in, which is why this is all these sessions are all about helping you get ad ready so that by the end of the month, like you'll, you'll be so confident that you can spend money on ads. And our next session is going to talk a lot more about, how to actually spend money on ads without having to spend money on ads. I'm really excited about that one. That's kind of the more intermediate. This one is a, a little bit more of a beginner type of session, but um, so you've got to go where the traffic is. So organic traffic, paid traffic, organic traffic has its place. Like I said, it's the icing on the cake. Some people like eating cake without icing, but I love having cake with icing. I don't like a lot of icing, but I do like the icing because it's free. You don't have to worry about, um, spending money on this type of traffic. You literally can, like I can literally go on Instagram stories, do a little story about how I'm making pudding. And then suddenly somebody sees it and they're like, Oh, let me go see what else she has. They go and they click through stuff and then they sign up and buy something. Right? So it's, it's like, it, it is like icing on a cake. It's great. A lot of people will, um, think that this is their only strategy. So they're like, I've been posting on Instagram. I've been posting on Facebook and I've been, you know, putting stuff on LinkedIn and articles and stuff, but no one is buying. And that's because you're only focusing on the icing, but you actually have to have a cake right before you can just have icing. All right. I'm going to drop that analogy for a second. Um, because like icing is great. I'm, I just picked it back up again because it, you know, it's great to have that organic traffic, but what you really want is you really want the solid foundation, which is the paid traffic. Okay. So one thing that I would love for you to do is to look at all of your sources of traffic. Um, you probably have people coming to find out about you through social media because most people are on, you know, web 2.0 right now, social media. So maybe LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, um, Pinterest, like, YouTube, look to see what your top social platforms are, and then make sure that the content that you're sharing there is specific to your ideal client. Okay. The ideal client who wants to work with you, who needs help, make sure that content is really helpful for them because those people, the organic people, when they see that content, they're going to start clicking around and then they'll make it over to your, um, your email list. Okay. And you, uh, we're going to talk about, um, landing page and all that stuff, like a little bit more of the technical stuff in the next, um, the next session. I'd talk about it in the grow your list, grow your income, but I'm going to touch on it again in the next session of how to get the free leads. Cause you've got to have that in order to set things up. Okay. Um, and so now the pay traffic, so your pay traffic is traffic that you do control It's traffic that you know, that if you spend a thousand dollars, you can get a thousand clicks and hopefully you can do a little bit better than that. Uh, um, and maybe you can get 2000 clicks or 4,000 clicks, depending on how much it costs for you to get a click. If you could get, you know, 10, th let's start, just keep it at a thousand. If you could get a thousand clicks over to your, um, your email landing page where someone's ready to sign up for your email list, how many people do you think you could get on your email list? I'll answer it for you. Um, in general, you're going to get anywhere from 20 to 30% of people who click over to actually sign up. Okay. And that's, that's really, really good. That means that whatever they clicked, it matches what they're looking at right before they're about to sign up and they're still excited to sign up and then they sign up. That means that there were no technical issues. The page didn't load too slow. Um, you know, like everything matched perfect you'll, you'll likely get anywhere from 20 to 30%. Okay. Um, I've seen pages get as high as 40%, but in general, if I can get my page to around 33, 34%, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay. 
And so that could be a blog post that you've written and at the bottom of it, you say, hey, sign up. It could be sending people to your website and at the top, um, for example, if you go directly to my home page, I'll show this again. Um, I think it's here, here it is. Yeah, if you go directly to my home page, you'll notice that right here on the home page, there's a big button to watch the free training. This is an email capture because when you click to watch the free training, you're gonna go to the page that requests your email address. So on your website, you've gotta have something that you ask, you're actually asking for their email address, okay? So when I pay for traffic, I'm sending people not just to my main website, I'm sending people to a page that only asks for their email address. And I know that depending on the number of people who sign up, who actually provide their email address, there's gonna be a certain percentage of people who say yes to booking a call with me, or say yes to signing up for a course, who say yes to just staying on the um, on that email list. And once I know those numbers, well now I know if I put 100 people in where I get 100 email addresses, and maybe it costs me a dollar an email address, which is, that's, let me make it more realistic, $5 an email address, so it costs me $500, but after I get 100 people in, I've made one sale of a thousand dollar offer well that means that i spent 500 and i made 1000 and i made 500 dollars right the problem is is that a lot of times people can't see that end result and so they get to spending 499 dollars and they needed to spend just one more dollar in order to make that sale and they're like that's it this doesn't work like i'm not going to do it okay so that's what we're gonna be talking about over the next couple of sessions. But for this session, I just wanted to get really clear on the foundation of uh, our number one goal is to capture the email address so that we can continue the conversation with our ideal client. Whether they're ready to buy or not ready to buy, we've gotta be able to have that conversation with them. You should be emailing at least once per week, if not um, three times a week, and, and creating content that is helpful for your ideal client Always have a call to action, letting them know, here's how you work with me, here's how you purchase, here's how you sign up or whatever. And then getting into your mind the idea that our goal is to continue to bring more and more people onto our email list, but the right people. Now I wanted to, um, as a final note, because we're about to wrap up, I wanted to um, answer the questions, the couple questions that I asked inside of the group um, because I did get some responses on those questions and for each event I will have um, some more questions for each event which will help me to kind of create the content and figure out what I should cover specifically okay but I did want to share this um, and some of the questions that were asked all right let me go to the event Um, okay, so one of the questions was how many, how much money do you think someone with a list of a thousand people is making? So there are a couple guesses on this, um, and you guys, if you're here live, go ahead and type what you think. Uh, someone suggested ten thousand a month, um, thirty thousand dollars. If ten percent of the list buys a three hundred dollar course, you should make thirty thousand um, dollars. Fifteen thousand a month. Um, some people didn't give an actual number, 200,000 <laughs> in a month. So, or, or she didn't say in a month, so it could be for the year. So in general, each qualified, and I use the word qualified, meaning they're not just like the example I gave earlier, where it's someone who sells a product, but I only help people who offer services. Well, then obviously that person is, that email address is not valuable to me. In general, for every qualified email subscriber you have on your list, you should be making at least $1 per month per person. So with 1,000 people on your email list, you should be earning $1,000 per month per person. Um, that's an average. Is it more or less depending on who you are, what you have? Like, yes, everybody's different. Um, when I had a list of eight, like 20 people, it wasn't a whole lot. Um, I was 
close to generating like three or four hundred dollars a month. And it was because I started doing workshops and webinars and I was inviting people and they would spend forty seven dollars on the workshop. And if I if I got like 10 people, that was four hundred and seventy dollars. I think my workshops, I used to get like five or six people. So, you know, do one every month, which is what I did. I would do every other every other week I was doing a workshop. So I did twice a month. Um, and I had a small list, but doing those workshops allowed me to grow my list as well. Okay. Um, how many email subscribers do you think someone should have before making sales? Uh, the answer to that is one. So whoever is on your email list, go ahead and, and that's your one potential buyer. Um, and then I've already talked about these other things. How often do you, um, send emails to your list and what ways are you, um, making sh what ways are you currently using to get email subscribers okay um the final thing is uh what do you want to make sure that i cover um how to nurture people on your list so that they buy well the answer to that is by creating helpful content and specifically speaking to your ideal client avatar and always having a call to action so those two things that's it how do i get people um to my page to sign up for my free offer so i can get that email and that is learning how to drive traffic okay so I hope this was helpful. Do we have any other, um, any questions that I can answer? All right. Our next, um, if you're, if you're still typing, that's fine. I'm just going to go over our, um, what we're doing next. Our next sessions are going to be about how to make sales with free leads. Okay. We're going to, we're getting ad ready. Okay. So by the end of this month, I want everyone to be ready to spend money on ads. However, I understand that some people, the hurdle is I actually have to spend money on ads. So that's what we're going to be doing this entire month. Okay. Our next session, I'm going to share with you how to actually get free leads, meaning that you're either spending very, very little or you're not spending any money at all. You're actually getting paid to get email addresses. Okay. I will share with you the concept as well as show you how it's done and show you how I've done it as well. And, um, and I think that's going to be really helpful for you guys. So I'm excited about that session. All right, cool. All right. Well, you guys have a wonderful Saturday. I'm going to stop the recording here.